what, you know, happened in the UK or even where you're at right now in France. I mean, you know, rich history, you know, and what you're talking about, the things that happened in a name of religion. I mean, actually, it uh, it wasn't, as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't even religion. It was just the, the most horrible thing it, it could be inflicted on another human being under the name of God. Yeah. So it, it's scary. I know, I know. I know, I know it's there. You know, when you think of the Inquisition, for example, and um, uh, and, the, and the Cassars that were wiped out in, in here in the south of France, not not so far away from where I am. Um, no, and now I, I, there's another thing you might have you might have picked up, um, but but um, up until and now let's get this right. Um, up until the year 553 A.D. Uh, there are a lot of people who, who say that Christ, that uh, reincarnation was part of the Christian doctrine. Yeah, I, I think they did and, believe in it back, you know, going back to a certain point, yeah. and all of a sudden it was like, you know, uh, like witchcraft, it, it, you know, and, and everything else. I mean, yeah. if you said at yeah. one point, I know in the United States around, you know, um, uh, Salem and stuff like that in the 1790s or 17, whatever it was, if you even mentioned reincarnation or anything like that, you know, in, that you lived another life, the next thing you know, you were being put on a cross and set on fire. Absolutely. And and and, and, it, and, and it happened in, 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 in 553 at the time of the Emperor Justinian and his very ambitious wife, Theodora. And according to according to one report, one one uh, narrative that I that I that I've heard, well, not only one actually, but still, and this Theodora, Empress Empress uh, uh, Theodora, was a very ambitious lady, and apparently she had started off uh, in the royal palace as a concubine, just one of the many, but she finally got her her way into Justinian's favours and ultimately became his wife and became empress because at the time, of course, the Christian church was divided into the East and the West and, and Constantinople was the was the capital of the or the Eastern Church. And um and so she, being a very ambitious lady, she wanted to be okay, she was now empress, but she wanted more than that. And she remembered, uh, or she, of course, re had read that in ancient Rome, the emperor and the empress were considered to be gods. So um, she thought, well, I want to be, a, I want to be a goddess as well. The only problem is that if you go along with the idea of reincarnation, you might come back as a as a as a serf, as a, as, a, as a servant, or a or a pig keeper, you know. So, um, so she was very influential in getting Justinian, or she, she sort of, she was a great manipulator. I mean, Martha Hari had nothing on her. And she, uh, you know, she sort of got it to the point where the, the uh, bishops in, in, a, in a council held in 553 um, voted that uh, reincarnation was an anathema and should be suppressed with all force possible. And and that's what happened. And then any reference to it was was stricken out of the of the Bible, uh, apart from one or two trace trace elements that, that still do kind of re, re, refer to it. But anyway, um and ever since then, uh of course religion has been used in, in the you know um, as a as a political tool to where you know, if you say I am the only one who can get you out of this mess, I'm the, if you if you do what I say, you'll go to the good place, or if you don't do what I say, you'll go to the hot place, uh, which was a total invention, of course, uh, and and it was it was manipulation of the, of the masses, you know, and and unfortunately that has perpetuated right through to our day, and that's why reincarnation is is a uh, you know is still sort of a, a, a weird topic. Yeah. I had a, a person on a mystic that claimed that you can actually be reincarnated even as an animal. I, I don't know if you believe that or if you heard cases of that, 
But uh, that's what she was claiming, too, that, you know, it's no guarantee well, you could come back I, I, as a I human. Don't, I'm not, I, mean, well, I, I do see why not. I mean, I, you know, if, if we consider that the lives are a journey, there doesn't seem much point in sort of, you know, coming back as a dog if you've been a human. Even if you've been a, you know, a pretty nasty human, um, you still need to experience the suffering you you imposed upon others, and you you're not going to get that if you're a dog. You know, you just you're just not equipped. It's it's like it's like wanting to go to the moon, and you know, and you get into your car. Exactly. And you, your car will not drive you to the moon. So um, you you've got to get into a rocket. And so you know, so the rocket is is the human the human species or the human vehicle, and the car is the dog vehicle. So it, 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 it does not make evolutionary sense or, or um, compensationary uh, sense to imagine, you know, that you come back as an animal. Well, it's trial and, and error. And I think that... Huh? Oh, he was saying it's trial and error. I mean, you know, I, you know uh, my feeling on being reincarnated, you keep coming back till you get it right. But how do you know when you ever get it right? I mean, you know. Well, you can always... Uh... You can have as many kids. You can keep having as many kids in your uh, in your livelihood right now. Not saying go to like a sperm bank and you know donate some sperm or anything and have kids that way. But what I'm saying is, if you have like a few kids here and there, you might be reincarnated in future generations when you pass on. But don't go with that idea and. Go drop off some sperm in the sperm bank. Okay, you Kevin, I, I won't drop some sperm off in the sperm bank, okay? But, <laughs> but you know, it, it does, you know, I can see it. If, let's say you have totally, uh, let's say you grew up hating a certain race with a passion, and, and you voiced it. I mean, you know, I could maybe see you coming back and being reincarnated as that person, uh, that, that in that race, just for you could see what it was like. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel that could happen. Um, in that case, there's maybe a lot of uh, World War II Nazis walking around that are Jewish. I don't know. And they're finding out what it's like to be Jewish. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I just That was my little input here. Yeah. I mean, um, if you, you know, if we take this, take this argument a bit further, I mean, when you think about the number of conflicts there are in the world, and my golly, there are so many going on right now, just see how many of them are, uh, are, are the result of, of animosity between religions. Now, if, um, you know, for example, but if, if, if everybody realized that reincarnation is a reality, I mean, just imagine that, you know, you, you're Turks, could uh, your your Turks could if they knew that they could come back as Kurds, and uh, if Israelis could come back as Palestinians and knew that they might come back as Palestinians, uh, for example. I mean, you know, all all, all the reasons for, for for much of the conflict in the world could simply disappear. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's a shame though that this. You know, memories that the kids have of being a prior life, you know, on most of them, it fades away because I think, you know, if it didn't fade away, I think it could actually help change society quite a bit. If if everybody kind of remembered their past life and what they did wrong or good, you know, and try to prove well, on it, I think we'd have a lot well, less murders and a lot less wars. Well, could they use that for propaganda, though? Like, what if the not saying the Nazis will come back or would come back, but what if uh, like another form of government decides to exploit that and decides to use like propaganda to, you know, exploit that? Like, hey, you can come back as another person with such and such ethnicity. And then they decide to try to make money off that. That would be horrible. I don't know. I just think. Yeah, well, but yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't really think you can. I don't. Think, well, mind you, they, people might try and in, try and sort of influence people and say we can, we can, uh, we can sort of direct you into, or, or we're going to, we have some power over. No, but no, but they, that, I don't. I don't really think that would work. But you never know what people will try. Huh? 
I mean, if they if they can if they can if they can uh, sort of brainwash you into believing anything, I mean, who knows? I don't know. How about uh, how about if somebody was not normal? They had some mental issues, right? And they went out, you know, like a a serial killer, for example. Figured, well, gee, I can go out and kill all these people. It doesn't matter if they execute me. I'll just come back again. You know, it's it's, things like that. It's kind of scary, but uh, yeah, okay, I agree. I agree. I agree that that is. uh, I agree that that that, uh, at that point it it would be it would it would seem that you would have you know that all the uh, what should we say all the limits are off. I mean. that you could do about anything. Uh, you can also, you can also, another danger is that you become fatalistic. Yeah. You know, you think, oh, well, I need, I don't need to do anything in this life. I'll just sort of hang around and smoke weed, you know, and then, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something a bit more positive in the next life. Yeah. Um, sure. This is why, why one has to tread a little bit carefully um, and why the, the, Reincarnation narrative has to be diffused, um, you know, with with a certain degree of sense. Yeah. Um, but but sure, I mean uh, it, that is true that the, the people could could uh, sort of misuse it. Yeah. How how would you though if you had a child that you know uh, that uh, was coming up to you and saying, "Hey, Dad. Hey, Mom." Uh, I was, uh, you know, in the Civil War, or I was a, a ship captain, or whatever, and started coming up to you and started, you know, telling you all these stories, and you know, and 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 you know that that the child is not old enough to digest that on even on TV. I mean, how would the average person handle it? I mean, y- your book gives some good insights, but I mean. Is it something you you'd let your kid just keep talking about, or would you try to stop him from talking about it? No, I mean you know when that happens. I mean, yeah, this is the whole point. When something like if well, if something like that happens, it would be very good to use uh, well, okay, to to use to to use uh, the the books uh, could indeed help, or or and and this is this is important that if if there appears to be something involving any kind of traumatic experience, then really people should should search for um, therapists, for, for past life regression therapists, to to have a to to, to, to have a look. Yeah. Because um, uh, and that there is a you know there is a sort of a health warning in the book you know that says uh, that says um, if if anything traumatic does appear. Um, you know, you should really should should go to a to a therapist, and preferably, of course, one who is um, used to to working with children and because, open open to um, the subject. Because if you go to the wrong type of therapist, I'll be honest with you, uh, they'll label you as having some type of you know uh, problem. So I mean, it's yeah, yeah it's important you go to the right uh, you know uh, therapist. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, and the, the course of the, the, the best known therapist is, 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 is Carol Bowman, but there are there are others um, there are others, uh, and quite a few in the states, uh, you know, who, who do who do deal with deal with children. But there is one there is one thing. Um, of course, there are many adults who, who go through um, uh, past life regression, and. Um, in particular, there's the there's the uh, QHHT um, uh, technique, which was developed by by, um, by uh, Dolores. Um, I've forgotten her name. Dolores, Dolores. Anyway, um, um, and and it's and that is remarkable because because there they they take you into a into a into a, a level of hypnosis where you are able to visit your 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 previous lives, uh, and uh, and it's really quite amazing what can what can come up. You know, any 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 of her books um, were were are really. She's rich. I think she, she wrote about um, she wrote about nineteen books. I think. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to just. Uh, 
Yeah, Dolores. Yeah, Dolores Cannon. Dolores, Dolores Cannon. So, are are you planning to uh, write?